Hello everyone and welcome back to the workshop. Um, yesterday I finished up uh, a brief little summary of the missile uh, for Mass. Um, at the time I also mentioned that uh, that was the last thing that I had to discuss. Um, turns out I actually forgot that I had ordered um, a little uh, book here called The Ordo. Uh, one of the deacons um, at my church... Uh, uh, at our Bible study, I noticed um, he had had this book. He had just picked it up. Apparently, the um, the church or the or the diocese uh, you know buys it for them uh, for the priests and the uh, uh, and the deacons. Uh, so I asked him a little bit about it. Um, you know, he just gave me like the ten second overview. Um, you know, telling me that it's uh, just tells them what uh, you know um, a little brief synopsis of what uh, what you can build a homily off of, as well as what vestments. Uh, um, they're supposed to wear. Um, that was pretty much it. Uh, but it did pique my interest because I am one of those people that likes to uh, know as much as possible um, about why we do the things we do, um, the formulas, the you know the rituals, the uh, the whole structure of everything. So I went ahead and I did buy this. Um, it sent me back about twenty bucks plus uh, shipping. Um, it is an annual. Uh, it's not like uh, Liturgy of the Hours or anything like that, or even a, a missile where once you buy it, you can have it pretty much for the rest of your life, you know, your natural life, or until the book wears out. Um, this one is uh, an annual, um, so you do have to get a new one every year uh, at that price point. Um, may not be much of a use to you, um, probably not much of a use to me as well, really, other than, again, as an academic, uh, you know, uh, instructional thing. Um, but I figured it was worth talking about because, like I said, if you were like if you like to get into the nuts and bolts of things, uh, this is something that's uh, that's really pretty uh, pretty cool to look at. Um, so I'm just gonna give you a little brief uh, overview of it. It is called the Ordo. Um, it's the Order of Prayer and the Liturgy of the Hours and Celebration of the Eucharist. Uh, this is for this year. Um, now these books, there I, I forgot how many there are. Uh, I think there may be like 27 or no no maybe 30 something um, of these books because uh, they they actually are per um, diocese, or I mean, uh, or archdiocese, actually. Uh, in this case, I am in the uh, diocese of Trenton, New Jersey. Um, as you can see, uh, we do have an archdiocese in uh, New Jersey, uh, in Newark, uh, Camden, Metuchen, Patterson, and the one I'm in, which is Trenton. Um, now, one of the things that they do put in this book, um, but which makes it, um, I guess, personalized per diocese, is they do include uh, the necrology, um, which is people, you know, um, uh, men, you know, cause that's old clergy pretty much, uh, men, uh, priests and deacons, um, uh, that have died, um, that were members of these, uh, the diocese. Um, as you can see here, it puts their date of death, uh, exact information unknown, but every day of the year, they do mention those that have uh, have, have uh, gone to their eternal rewards, um, like here, for example, uh, that November thirtieth. Uh, these individuals, as you see, reverends and monsignors, reverends of the priests, uh, monsignors are obviously the next level up, and it does mention from the Trenton Diocese, the Trenton Diocese, uh, Newark, Patterson, Camden, Metuchen, and they're in date order. Um, not in seniority, because I did notice, um, we call it, uh, in here, see, when seniors, reverends, there's deacons, I noticed that deacons appeared, you know, before, before reverends, which, you know, if you're, if it was, you know, hierarchically, uh, organized, it would not be correct, but it is by the date of their deaths. Um, the only time I did notice in here also, uh, I think recently, there is, for those that don't know, there was, there was actually one, I saw a bishop. Oh, here it is. Here's, well, here's another one actually. You can notice here. There's uh, most of them are all reverends, you know, for uh, for priests. Um, but you'll see a most reverend. Uh, and if you don't know the terminology, most reverend uh, represents a bishop. Uh, so the bishop of Newark uh, died in 1901. Um, all right, now the book itself. Like I said, it's uh, it actually, you know, if you if you recall from my missile uh, talk, which I actually did yesterday, um, I completely forgot what year we were in. Uh, the Ordo, plainly, uh, actually, um, let me show that it's book, book 
23 is uh covers the this particular diocese and uh you know archdiocese of the newark so again you have to know you know you know if you if you go to the website uh which is the uh, the Paulist Press, they will tell you, know, you can find your diocese and it'll let you know exactly what book uh, you should be in. And as a matter of fact, it looks like these also, also have, I don't know if you can see it there, th these are tear-out pages. Because it is a, uh, you know, a one-time use, you know, for the year. You can actually rip out the pages and the book will get lighter and lighter and you'll never be, you know, lose your place. Um, I have chosen not to do that right now because it's still, I'm still showing it to you. But anyway, you can rip out these pages and uh, you know, keep the book nice and clean um, and up to date. Um, the preface gives you a little intro introduction, uh, a little explanation, actually, of what uh, what it, what this is. You know, they mention the daily you know, praxis, the sponsorial psalms, suggested prayers, monthly papal intercessions, the saints. You know, all this stuff is in here. Um, it gives you a liturgical calendar, which is convenient. Uh, again, it's 2020, so you can see where all the major uh, Sundays are in throughout the entire year up until uh, it looks like a liturgical year. No, it's a calendar year, I believe. Yeah, calendar year over there. And then it looks like they give you the, or the part of the liturgical year in there as well of the previous year. And they also conveniently give you important dates for the next year as well. 2021. Oh, but what I was saying before was in the very beginning, it does tell you your Sunday cycle and your weekday cycle. If you remember from my missile discussion, uh, the weekday cycle is in a two cycle period, uh, year one and year two, and Sundays are in a three year cycle, year ABC. So with the auto, it puts it right in there for you. Can't forget that. Uh, it also gives you, yeah, yeah, there's the lectionary cycle again with the actual specific dates that it runs for the Sundays. And also, the three years, um, they usually focus on a specific uh, saint. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, a specific gospel. Uh, that's where most of them get pulled from. Um, I, without actually looking it up, I'm not quite sure. I, I believe last year was, uh, was, a, was a main focus on St. Luke. Uh, this year uh, is going to be a focus on St. Matthew. I'm not sure who the focus is on uh, the next year, on uh, year B. Um, but anyway, uh, so here we go. The liturgy of the hours, it, it also gives you an idea of the volumes that you're going to be using because don't forget, um, um, priests and deacons do have to, uh, are obligated to recite, um, you know, parts of the liturgy of the hours, uh, particularly morning and evening prayer. So as a result, this book is again, designed for, uh, you know, the clergy, um, and it does let them know what volume they should be using, assuming they're using the four volume set. Um, obviously it doesn't really help much if you're only doing the single volume set, but they do you know, use the four volume uh, references here. Uh, usually the outline again, uh, for, this is for next year. As you can see it's near the end of the year. That's officially because of the uh, liturgical year. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll start with the uh, first Sunday of Advent and that will be in the B1 cycle. Again, we're in year two, um, so first Sunday event of Advent is going to be classified in year one as we, it rotates over and back into Sunday cycle B. So that's just a little more little trivia and information. They also give you the uh, the full calendar here, so you can you know thumb through that real quick, you know check a date if you need to, or even I guess write notes. Although it's kind of small to write notes on there, but uh, they give you the symbols. Uh, obviously, Sundays are holy days of obligation. Uh, they mark solemnities, feasts, obligatory memorials, optional memorials, so you, as you'll notice, is in uh, italicized. Hymn of praise, the to do them to let you know when it's sung at. OR, uh, liturgy people, you know what that is. That's the Office of Readings. Uh, year or date of death. Um, uh, uh, PSS 1 is the respective week of the four week Psalter. So that obviously is going to be the Psalter week one. That only applies to the Liturgy of the Hours. Because uh, again, this is a, a combined Mass and Liturgy of the Hours kind of uh, kind of book. Uh, then you have V1, V2, V3, and R1, R2, R3. These are um, special conditions for Masses. Um, you know, and V1, as you see, the ritual Masses are permitted. Masses and prayers for various needs and occasions. 
And then it goes through even looser and looser, I guess you'd call it, uh, yeah, mass types, version 2. Ritual mass for various needs and occasions, in case of serious need. Uh, number 3, chosen by the priest celebrant in favor of the devotion of the people are allowed. Uh, same thing with the, uh, the funeral masses. Funeral masses are permitted on R1s. Masses, uh, funeral masses and masses for the occasion of news of a death, final burial, or fa first anniversary. You can see it goes progressively uh, uh, more, I guess you'd say, laxed or, or relaxed. R3 includes R1 and R2, and the daily mass for the dead is allowed as well. And right there, when R1 and R2 are not permitted, neither is R3, which makes common sense because these are all you know, in order of uh, you know, uh, permissions. Um, the reason they throw that in there is because there are obviously going to be certain days where you are not going to be holding a funeral. Um, I would imagine Christmas, for example, you would not be allowing funeral masses to be held. Um, just, you know, a lot of that's common sense, but, uh, you know, it is laid out so that there is no question. Italics indicates whatever's optional. Again, uh, just as it is in the memorial, the optional memorial, it is italicized. Um, looks like... The rest of the stuff here is all related to the liturgy of the hours. Uh, office of readings, morning prayer, daytime prayer, you know, all three of them are listed there. Evening prayer, evening prayer one or two, because don't forget, uh, Saturday evenings uh, are actually technically Sundays. So that's evening prayer one. Night prayer, night prayer one or two, again, depending on whether it's following the evening prayer one or two or solemnities. Pastoral notes, liturgical directives, necrology uh, information. Uh, we flip over back to the abbrevi abbreviations and references. Uh, you can see just some basic, you know, shorthand here. Following Gloria, green, the colors, etc., etc., etc. Okay, so now some little information on Advent. All right, so we're going to jump right in. I'm just going to go right to oh, the yeah, last year was year two. No. See, I gotta look up again. Oh no, this is okay. We're in A2. So, because this is the end of last year, 2019, that is, um, we were in C1 and now we're in A2. So, that's why it's showing both November through December. So, right now, today is the 8th. Um, so, I'll just flip over to the 9th anyway uh, for tomorrow. You can see tomorrow, January 9th. Uh, now, what do some of these things mean? Because uh, every day is going to have these in here. Now you can see, uh, there's a note. WH, that means vestments of the priest are going to be white. Uh, it's pretty much white for the rest of the week here, um, including Sunday. Uh, there are certain days, like when we go back into ordinary time, after the baptism, uh, you know, the solemnity of the baptism of our Lord, uh, it's going to go back to ordinary time. And in the perfect example here, you can see there is a memorial going on. It is an optional memorial. And that is why you have green and you have white. Green is the normal color for uh, ordinary time. So if you were not celebrating that memorial, since it is optional, um, the priest would be wearing his green vestments. If he chose to uh, honor the um, uh, the memorial, he would be wearing white vestments. Um, and the V3 VR means pretty much any mass can be done. If we go back to here, uh, we're still in the Christmas uh, up until the, um, the solemnity of uh, you know, the baptism of our Lord. So they only allow the V2 and the R2 types of masses, uh, which is still pretty lax. Uh, again, if you refer back to the key to the symbols, you can see exactly what it is. Ritual masses are permitted. Masses and prayers for various needs and occasions as well as votive masses. And all the way up to the V2s. Uh, the only thing that they're not really giving you is uh, pretty much uh, the free-for-all at V3s and R3s. All right. Um... In the, uh, the section here called Hours, you can see it's telling you uh, we should be in the Psalter um, you know, week two. And that you're going to be following the seasonal you know, prop of the day, which would be the, uh, the proper. So whatever's in the seasonal proper of the day, uh, which is, you know, I believe it specifically says in the Liturgy of the Hours, um, in the proper of seasons, um, it does mention uh, that it is the, well, for this day would be Thursday, 
uh, after the epiphany and before the baptism. So that helps you pinpoint your point in the hours if you don't, you know, especially if you don't have a guide, um, you know, like uh, the St. Joseph guide, like I bought. Um, you can probably, you know, you, you know, you, you know where you should be, which is somewhere in your, in your proper, uh, in, and the Psalter week two mass itself, uh, is telling you as well. Um, the mass was going to be from there, uh, from the liturgy for the priest. It's going to be the proper of the day after the epiphany, the preface of the epiphany or the nativity. So when they do the preface of the Eucharist, uh, you know, uh, during the flow of the mass, they would use the, either the. Uh, the preface that's specified for the Epiphany, or they can use one for the Nativity one number one through three. I don't have uh, a, ma a full mass book like that. Um, I don't know if it's even covered fully in the uh, uh, in the Missal, but uh, this is not a lesson on the Missal. This is just telling you what the Ordo shows you. Um, and the readings are in here as well. Um, again, the readings will start with a number. Um, this number is actually, um, what do you call it, uh, like a paragraph type uh, number. Um in the uh, the liturgy, um, the, the lecturing book that they have uh, at, at the at the church, it's usually that big book uh, that the uh, the lectors read from when they do their first reading, second readings, and their gospels. Well, the priest says the gospel, but the uh, the readings come from uh, yeah, from the the book. Uh, I forget what it's called. They may be called the lectionary, um, but that's the paragraph. It, it's kind of like in the um, in the hymnal. You know, it's not a page number. 215 is not a page number. It, here, let me show you. It's kind of like in the hymnal. When, when you're looking for a specific hymn, if you'll notice there's, you know, hymn number 197, 198, even though you're on page, uh, well, there is no page number on these. But anyway, um, it's similar similar to this. You know, the, you know, the lecturing book will have, you know, these numbers in there, not necessarily page numbers, but that's the readings that they'll be, they'll be pulling from. So that's where those readings are specifically pinpointed. Now, this is this thing I thought was really interesting and pretty cool. Um, this little note here is supposed to, uh, you know, help um, help develop a homily. Uh, I tell you what the theme of the mass is. Uh, for example, on the ninth, Jesus proclaims the gratuitous love of God. Let every nation respond to this grace by keeping God's commandments. Now, the, you see how that flows. It's 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 like it's like written, you know, just like uh, you know, like a regular sentence would be uh, here. By believing in the Son of God, the leper is cured of his disease, and God is praised. Well, that that sounds like a real nice, you know, flowing. But where did it come from, and and why is that? Well, if you'll notice, there's little numbers on here, two, P.S. and one. Uh, logically, it, it does mention it in the beginning of the uh, the book and the, uh, the not the abbreviations here at the bottom of the uh, yeah the abbreviations and references. There's one, two, three P.S. It indicates the respective reading and respo uh, responsorial psalm. Um, so that, that is actually in order. Um, number one is the first reading. Number two is the second reading. And three is the gospel reading. And the PS is the uh, responsorial psalm set at Mass. Which you can see plainly uh, on these weekday Masses, it does not have a number three. Because it, uh, I'm sorry. Um, uh, yeah, it does not have a number three, which would be the gospel reading. Um, for daily Mass, if you recall, it only has one reading and the gospel. So there is no set number. That number three doesn't represent gospel all the time, um, but it, but it is technically the second reading for a daily mass. So this is actually the gospel. The gospel message is Jesus proclaims the gratuitous love of God. The responsorial psalm has the let every nation portion of it. And the first reading is a response to this grace by keeping God's commandments. Um... How did that all come about? Uh, you know, because you know, you'll see it, it's out of order sometimes. You know, like this one is two PS one. This one is one two PS. Sundays, like this Sunday here, uh, is uh, three one two PS. Well, I wasn't sure, you know, um, you know, how that all linked together, so I decided I actually printed out uh, a couple of the pages. You know, from the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops, just so I could see what they're talking about. So in this particular case, there's January 9th, 2020, and this Thursday after Epiphany, there's electionary number 215. There's the electionary number 215. First reading is 1 John. First reading is... Oh, there. 1 John. And if you actually read the reading, now remember, in the 
in the order here, uh, where's number one? First reading was about respond to this grace by keeping God's commandments. All right, so let's go to the first reading. Uh, uh, so if we go through the whole reading, I'm not going to read the whole thing here for you, but, but look at this. We're talking about a commandment. We're even talking about that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. So we are talking about commandments here, so that makes sense. That flows, doesn't it? All right, uh, now the second reading, Jesus proclaims the gratuitous love of God. Okay, that's the second part of the readings, uh, which is right here. Uh, it's the, yep, there's the gospel. All right, now what was the topic again in here? Uh, the Jesus proclaims the gratuitous love of God. So if you were to read through the you know, the uh, the actual gospel, never tell you all you know, the spirit of the Lord has anointed me, proclaim to the attendant. So, yeah, so, uh, and all are amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. So it's all the same theme of the gratuitous love of God. And the Psalter, the, I mean, I'm sorry, this, uh, the responsorial psalm under the psalm is re respond to this grace. Oh, I'm sorry. Let the, every nation, there it is, let every nation. If we go back to the responsorial psalm for January 9th, look at that. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Let every nation on earth adore you. At the bottom, in him shall all the tribes of the earth be blessed. There is your theme of all the nations let every nation so that's how they tie it all together because I, I did hear um or read at some point that the uh the readings are all supposed to tie together with a common theme but you know sitting in mass uh, honestly i could never figure out even reading uh through through the missile i could not figure out what the threads are you know how they connect why they connect um, this th this book here is going to be invaluable uh, for me to at least uh, determine what the message that, uh, is trying to be conveyed. Um, I did follow along again. Uh, I don't have to bore you with any with more of these. I did uh, see. I did do January tenth as well. Uh, same thing. Lectionary two sixteen is the next uh, the next you know, section in the lectionary, and uh, the same themes again. Uh, and this time the themes are. By believing in the Son of God, the leper is cured of his disease, and God is praised. Again, nice flowing sentence, and it makes perfect sense. You know, the leper believed in God, and God is praised. All right, well, let's see. Uh, maybe I will bore you. Believe in the Son of God. Okay, the first reading. The spirits want to know. Uh, beloved, who indeed is the victor over the er over the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Okay, now we have a, we're discussing belief. The very last sentence, you who believe in the name of the Son of God. All right, that, that fulfills uh, the idea of believing in the Son of God. Now, the leper is cured of his disease. Okay, well, that's number two, which would be the gospel. And gospel, it happened that there was a man full of leprosy. And he fell prostrate, pleaded with him and said, Lord, if you wish, you can make me clean. Okay, well, that fulfills that sentence, or that part of the sentence, the leper is cured of his disease. And Let's see if the responsorial psalm should be praising God or mentioning the praise of God. Well, praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Glorify the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. So as you can see, it all flows pretty nicely, and it actually tells you what you should be, uh, you know, what, what, you, should, what you should be contemplating uh, at the Mass. Um, I even went, like I said, uh, there is an additional number because there are three readings on... Uh, on Sundays, and again, we have this similar situation where it's even built out more. Jesus is the beloved Son of the Father. He is the light of the nations and Lord of all creation. To him, all glory and praise. Okay, well, let's do that one real quickly, too. Uh, again, it flows very nicely. We start out with the gospel. Jesus is the beloved Son of the Father. So we find our gospel that I printed out here. There's our gospel. Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan. Now, we all remember this section, his baptism. And sure enough, look at the bottom. This is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Back to the Ordo. Jesus is the beloved son of the Father. Okay, that's been satisfied. He is the light of the nations. Oh, that's reading one. Back to reading one. 
Here's the servant whom I uphold. Blah, blah. And then up at the bottom, I, the Lord, acquitted victory of justice. Uh, let me get a small name brick. Up, a light for the nations. To open the eyes of the blind. And from the dungeon, those who live in darkness. Okay, well, now, there we are. He is the light of the nations. And then we go to, and Lord of all creation, which would be the second reading. So we bust out our second reading. And let's see if we can find something that references Lord of all creation. Uh, Peter proceeds to speak. Uh, truth, I see Joe. Well, rather than every nation, whoever fears him and acts up, probably is except you know, the Israelites. God was with him. Reading, I proceed to see to speak to those gathered in the house of Cornelius and truth. I see. Every nation, whoever fears him and acts up rightly, is acceptable to him. Uh. And Lord of all creation. In truth, I see that God shows no partiality. I don't. I mean, I don't really see how that would fulfill fulfill the and Lord all create. Oh, wait a minute. Number two. Three, he's the light of the nations. One, and the Lord of Lord of all creation. I don't see how that would fulfill it in reading two. Uh, plain that I can't really see it, but... Uh, well, oh, oh, there it is, there it is, there it is, my mistake. You know, you know the words he's in the new light. As he proclaimed peace through Jesus Christ. Uh, I blurred out, who is Lord of all. All right, so that would fulfill Lord of all creation. And then the responsorial psalm, to him be all glory and praise. And that should also be another easy one. Uh, it's time to say, all say glory. The Lord is enthroned above the flood. The voice of the Lord is mighty, is majestic. The Lord will bless his people with peace. But there's the key right there. The Lord, uh, all in his temple, all say glory. And that would fulfill the, uh, to him all glory and praise. Um, so sorry if I hashed that up a little bit when I was trying to search for that uh, meaning in the second reading. But it is there. Um, like I said, I'm trying to rush through this uh, to not waste too much of your time here. Um, okay, notes. If you'll note, if you notice, uh, this is for the Sunday. If you'll notice, there's an, there's an F. That indicates it is a feast. Um, uh, I believe it's a, uh, is that a feast or is that the full meal? It should be feast, right? I want to verify that. I don't want to give you bad information. Yeah, F is for a feast. So it's a feast. So it's considered a feast. Um, white vestments. V1 and VR, uh, that, that's a little more restrictive. Um, if those were missing, then that would indicate that uh, that none of those things, like you know, any special masses or uh, funerals, um, yeah, would not be acceptable. Um, uh, is that the case? Yeah, I believe that's the case. V1. Let's check that again. Yeah, V1. Ritual masses are permitted. All right. Funerals. Funeral mass is permitted. All right. So you can't have a you can't have a funeral on the baptism of the Lord Day. Um, that's okay. Everything else, uh, I think we already covered. Um, if not, I'm going to do it again. There's the hours. Uh, and they do give you a little mention here. After the feast of the baptism of the Lord, ordinary time begins. Uh, so the hours you're going to use the seasonal proper, uh, you know, from the proper of, uh, of seasons, uh, and from the Epiphany uh, morning prayer. Use the proper antiphons. The Psalter is, uh, you know, year one that you're going to begin with. Day prayer is the proper using the antiphons, and the Psalter Sun three is letting you know that uh, um, I believe you're moving on to the n the next book. Sunday three, Sunday three. Yeah, yeah, it'll be the evening rolling in. Yeah, pro uh, probably because the, it's a new book you're switching over to. Um, for uh, is it for the evening for now on that? I'm not really sure on that. You know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna confuse myself anymore uh, or waste your time trying to figure it out myself. But uh, hopefully, you got the pretty much general idea of this. Um, Anyway, just to finish up, uh, there are, again, you know, voluminous notes here. 
telling you, uh, you know, a little pastoral notes here, ordinary time, I guess what it means, what kind of blessings are to be used in the Eucharistic prayers, uh, celebration of the Eucharist on weekdays, in terms of any mass, you know, it, there's a whole lot of notes for the lay, uh, for the, um, for the clerics, for the, uh, priests and the deacons, stuff that we don't, uh, as lay people have to really know or follow. But again, you know, like I said, this whole book is, um, just chock full of knowledge, um, if you like to, uh, if you like to follow along with stuff, you know, and understand, you know, as, as fully as you can about the mass and uh, the way the church does things and why they do it, you know, that's that's really what we're all about. Um, like I said, the Ordo does come uh, um, uh, diocese specific. Uh, I don't think, I, I don't imagine there would be any kind of variations as far as the masses are really concerned. Um, mostly would be the necrology that would change. I could see um, again. This is by diocese uh, for all the you know priests, deacons, and seniors, uh, bishops that have uh, that have died uh, from this particular uh, these particular dioceses and the archdiocese. Um, because I can't, like I said, I can't see them changing the mass around because that would you know, defeat the purpose of being Catholic. Uh, I mean, the word Catholic literally translated is you know it's translated um, into universal. Um, so we are the universal church, so all the masses should be the same across the entire universe, uh, which for now is, uh, you know, you know, across the world. Um, but theoretically, obviously, uh, across the universe. Um, so I can't see them making huge changes or, you know, or differences uh, in this. The only thing I can see is obviously um, uh, we have some saints that we recognize uh, in the United States that may not be recognized elsewhere in the world. Uh, from uh, optional memorials. Um, that's the only difference I could see, and they are included in here on certain days. Um, but, you know, like I said, uh, let's see if we can find one in here. Another one. Uh, one minute. Yeah, like here's another one. You know, found in the Servite Order. Optional memorials. Yeah, you know, so I mean, you know, some some of these some of these are are uh, are specific to the United States that we celebrate that uh, other dioceses in the world do not. But um, those, but the mass itself, you know, would not change. So the readings and everything else for the normal masses really wouldn't change. All right, uh, this video's probably gone a little bit longer than I meant it to for a uh, for a brief tutorial or an instruction or uh, information session on the the ordo. Again, this is something you can get directly from the the uh, Paulist Press. Yeah, the Paulist Press uh, website, uh, specific to your diocese um, or group of dioceses. Uh, probably by 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 state, most likely. Um, so just make sure you get the right one, and you can follow along and you can read some. But you know, you can see some of the names of you know people uh, yeah, that have gone before. Um, you may even see priests or deacons that you know. Um, you know what I've heard of in your in your parish or diocese uh, would appear here. Where you, you can you can think about them and maybe say a small prayer for them on their on the day of their deaths, which are again listed here, January 9th, This group January tenth, eleventh, etc., etc. And they cover through the entire year, obviously, because you know you know the chance of eternal rewards uh, you know does not stay uh, does not stop for any specific day. All right, uh, well, that's it. Uh, thank you for your time again. Now I have truly finished all the stuff um, that I can think of to do videos on. Uh, hope this was worth uh, some knowledge to you, and uh, God bless and have a good night.